Ever since I covered the old Mighty Morphin games, one of the most common requests I've gotten has been to check out the rest of the Rangers. Because not a lot of people remember this, but there have been way more than just these guys. So since I'm feeling a little palate cleanser is in order, after so many deep melancholic adventures about a lady in super-powered alien armor, and since I'm so hyped and a little nervous about that reboot movie coming out, what better time than now to go back to something optimistic and ridiculous? The Power Rangers. Which, uh, come to think of it, features five people in super-powered alien armor. First up is Power Rangers Zeo vs. The Machine Empire, released for the PC and the Apple Pippin in 1996. If the fact that I just described a game console called the Apple Pippin didn't clue you in, this game is the definition of obscurity. That obscurity comes mostly from how complicated it is to even get it running nowadays. Even once I got a virtual machine set up, I still had to spend a few hours trying to find compatible drivers and dealing with system errors and restarting repeatedly and... Do any of those 90s nostalgia kids remember this stuff? After all that effort, though, maybe this will be one of those unknown gems, kind of like the Game Gear titles. Let's see what lost treasure has been unearthed. Welcome, Rangers. You have arrived just in time. That's not my Zordon. Really? You humans are such fools. The Machine Empire is here, and it is here forever. <laughs> oh, God, and that really isn't my Mondo. If you're gonna go to the expense of licensing a franchise, is it really that much more to bring in the actual actors? And if you can't, the acting on the show was only passable at best. It couldn't have been that hard to find better sound-alikes, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised, even the show itself couldn't do that. The game's plot is simple. King Mondo has stolen the Zeo subcrystals and scattered them around the globe, so the rangers have to hunt them down. I have decided to relieve you of your Zeo crystals. <laughs> how did he even do that? And more relevantly, how are the Rangers even becoming the Rangers without them? Because, yeah, you exclusively play as the morphed Zeo Rangers in this game. But these are questions that the developers hoped the kids playing it would be too dumb to ask. But you know what? I'm pretty freaking sure I would have noticed how wrong this is. The arc that led into Zeo saw the Rangers cut off from their powers for 10 episodes. The power coins were destroyed. Their only option was to seek out a new power source in the Zeo crystal. This thing was built up, and they cannot morph without it. Imagine if Sonic lost all the Chaos Emeralds, and to get them back, he just transformed into Super Sonic. This game fails such a core aspect of the series' lore, and it's a very bad sign that nobody cared enough to fix this. The Rangers themselves, well, the models here actually look really great for the mid-90s. It's all pre-rendered, of course, but still, I can see myself being blown away by these graphics back then. And then you pick your Ranger, and then the game starts. I don't care if it was 1996. This is one of the most hideous games I've ever seen. The music is this dull, droning drum beat that just highlights how prosaic everything else is. The sound effects are weirdly realistic, but somehow also uncanny, which just adds to the surreal lack of cohesion. Also, I'm pretty sure the girls use a voice clip from the first Yellow Ranger, who'd been off the show for years by this point. The backgrounds look like they were pasted together from clip art assets. The ranger models look okay, but the animations are off-putting at best, and this at worst. And the gameplay is absolute garbage. Because of the slow, awkward animations, there's this constant disconnect between when you input a command and when it actually hits. It is so disjointed. There's no reliable way to approach an enemy, and no way you're going to avoid taking damage. And of course, the stage design itself reeks, as you're expected to wander around this copy-pasted area until you find 100 pieces of the Zeo subcrystal. This is not a professional product. Ranger models aside, this is what I'd expect out of a fan game made by one 14-year-old using click and play in the mid-90s. Heck, I played click and play fan games that were miles better than this. Honestly, this is one of the worst games I've ever played. It's probably a blessing for it that it's so hard to get running, because that's the only thing that saves it from being infamous instead of forgotten. Oh, and, you know, just the icing on the sundae here, it's another beat-em-up with no multiplayer. But that's fine. I wouldn't want to subject another human to this. The only Power Rangers game I actually played, or even knew of during this era, was this 1996 Super NES title. Oh, I love the Zeo theme song. And this 16-bit rendition does it justice. Huh, how about that subtitle? Battle Racers. Is this game stronger than before? Oh, Zeo. I rented this one when it came out, and I saw the pr 
problem immediately. Do you see it? Do you see this ice course with colored blocks? Like so many other games before and after it, this is a cheap, second-rate Mario Kart knockoff. If you're gonna rip off Mario Kart, and so many games have, you need to do things either different or better. Ideally both. Battle Racers doesn't do anything better, and what it does different makes it worse. You know how in Mario Kart you pick up different items and it keeps things interesting? There is none of that here. Instead, everyone just gets five weak blaster shots per race. This means that once you get too far behind, there is nothing you can do to catch up. Worse than that is just how generic it is. Aside from vanilla fake here, most of the other tracks have nothing to do with anything. Out of all the courses, only two actually showcase anything from the series. One in the Machine Empire base, and the other in the Zeozord hangar. On any of the other courses, you could pretty much just slap any license over the Rangers and it'd still fit. Like some of the Mighty Morphin games that were developed in Japan, I get the feeling the people who worked on this one had very limited familiarity with the American series. Super Mario Kart might be superannuated, but Battle Racers was obsolete before it was even released. Plus, okay, I get that the Zeo Rangers had bikes, but racing isn't what this franchise is about. No, it's about pinball. <laughs> Wow, the dissonance caused by hearing this song on the title screen with those words. <laughs> Full Tilt Battle Pinball is a very silly name for this 1996 PlayStation release. And while it's not quite as obscure as that PC abortion, I still never knew about it until this series. Like, I was still a pretty big Power Rangers fan in 1996, and I was on the internet by then, so you'd think I'd have heard about it. Going in, I was expecting this to be like most other licensed pinball games I've ever played, and be kind of generic with like a table select or something. So imagine my surprise when a narrative started up and... Emergency! Emergency! Earth is being attacked! The what?! Alpha, Alpha what have they done to you?! Alpha's supposed to sound like this! Oh, it takes more than a little implosion to keep me down! But here he's more like... It's an all-out attack! Rangers, respond at once! Okay, anyway, so the viewing globe... Shows simultaneous attacks everywhere! And the Rangers have to pursue the Machine Empire all over the world via pinball for some reason. The music is particularly evocative of the series, incorporating those familiar riffs without being lifted directly from the show. Each stage has its own unique objective. The tables are nicely designed and varied, and using a progression of stages like this instead of just static tables keeps things a lot more interesting. Most other pinball video games either adhere fairly strictly to realistic pinball tables, or they break very harshly from them. Power Rangers kind of does a little of both, but not enough of either. And yet the weirdness that arises from that juxtaposition ends up being incredibly appropriate for how ridiculous Power Rangers can be. Like, here, huh, what's that helmet doing on the table? I'll just... What? The... The Zeo Megazord just tashines onto the pinball table, and what is this awesome nonsense? Let's take care of business, right? And then the game just keeps going on, like, of course, giant robot on the table, standard part of pinball right there. Full Tilt Battle Pinball really surprised me. I'm not saying it's a must-play or anything, it does have flaws. Like, it's not always clear what the stage objective is, and these boss stages where you just hammer a monster over and over wear a bit thin. I mean, it's still pinball. But these two Zeo games are the only titles in the entire lineage that don't involve fighting. And if you're gonna defy the series' natural genre like that, Battle Racers gets it wrong. Full Tilt Pinball gets it very, very right. Plus, hey, the weird alpha voice is still way better than how he sounded in Turbo. What a complete catastrophe! That series, if you can believe this, was the point where the bottom truly dropped out of the Power Rangers fad. Next time I need a palate cleanser, I'll cover the games of that era. But right now, it's time to get back to action on the next season. It'll be another series of videos about a woman in a super-powered suit, but someone else will also be back again. And about time, too. Until then, you keep geeking, I'll keep critiquing.